I've heard you describe a startup as a movement before. Mm -hmm. And uh, what do you mean by that? Like how, in what way is a startup a movement? Yeah. Well, I usually discuss this in the context of trying to explain to founders what earned marketing is. You know, so there's, there's paid marketing, which is, you know, buying distribution, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, things like that. But then there's earn marketing, which is kind of everything else. It's, it's PR, it's communications, it's branding, it's content. It's, it's all the things that make word of mouth. you yeah. word of mouth. It's all the things that make you who you are, which is very hard to quantify, but is undeniably important. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of founders are kind of like, you know, uh, a, a whiz kid who aces the math portion of the SAT and then flunks the verbal. Like they're very comfortable with stacking up sort of quantifiable wins on paid marketing. But then when it comes to earned marketing, they just don't know how to present what they're doing to the world in an interesting way. And so this is where this idea that your startup is a movement in order to, to make your, your startup interesting to the world, it has to be a movement for change. And, and I think the best startups are, movements for change. They want to change the world in some way. They, they diagnose something that's wrong with the world as it stands today, and they want to move the world to a better place. And so they're constantly evangelizing for the change they want to make, almost like a political leader or the leader of a political movement. And, and so that's what I encourage, you know, founders to do now. So if you look at like the very best, I'd say founder CEOs, they do this. I mean, Mark Benioff with Salesforce or Elon Musk with Tesla or Steve Jobs with Apple, all about a cause that's much larger than themselves or even the company they're creating, right? With, with Benioff, it was about moving software to the cloud, moving business to the cloud. With Elon, it's about moving the whole world to sustainable transport and then sustainable um, energy. And with Steve Jobs, it was about you know, making the, 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 the computer more personal, you know, like the, you know, a bicycle for your brain. Yeah. There was always this much larger vision associated with the company. And when you, when you listen to these kind of movement founders talk, they're not talking about the specifics of their company as much as they're talking about this movement they're creating. And that just up levels it and makes it so much more interesting so, you know, even if you're just going to view it as like a tactic that you might want to use, it's a smart thing to do because you'll get more like, you know, earn marketing for your, for your company. But I also just think that, you know, just beyond the level of tactics, there is something to this idea that I think the really great founders see their startup as a movement, not just like a company. Yeah. And I mean, the, the other reason I like that as a, as a notion is that uh, very often people, when they talk about startups, they talk about startup markets the way they talk about big company markets. And a, a startup market is zero a lot of times at first. So it can't be mapped and segmented, sub-segmented. And, you know, on some level, the market emerges as a result of a movement where right. you get people to join one at a time. And it's the size of the gathering movement that defines the market that one day becomes a company. Totally. And, and that's, that's the thing that actually struck me when I was doing Yammer is I was constantly having to evangelize for all these ideas that were really bigger than Yammer. I mean, first of all, we had to evangelize for the cloud. Because it was one objection we 2009, 2010 is, well, this, looks, this product looks interesting. Can you just burn a copy on a Discord and install it behind our firewall? Like, no, no, no. You don't understand. Our product doesn't work that way. It's multi-tenant SaaS. So in order to even get them over that objection, we had to evangelize for the cloud and why multi-tenant SaaS was a better architecture. But then we also had to evangelize for this idea of freemium and, you know, because we were being accused of, of blackmailing IT, you know? And so, you know, we had to evangelize for this like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like, why would you want to buy software that could be shelfware that your employees aren't going to use? It's a good thing that your employees are adopting the software virally because they're de-risking the purchase for you, yeah. you know? And so we would go out and we would, so we ended up evangelizing, you know, for freemium. And then, you know, we'd be evangelizing, you know, th then we'd run up against this objection that, well, we don't want organizations to become 
too transparent. And so we literally had to evangelize for the idea of having a, a more open, transparent company and way of working. And so, and, and what we found is that when we up leveled the conversation and talked about these bigger ideas, we did better, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so, you know, and, and so this is, I guess, when this thought kind of occurred to me that the best startups are a movement for some larger change that they want to create in the world. Mm-hmm.